Mr. Chairman. And I have to tell you, Representative Rukavina and Democrats, I really enjoy this fake populism coming from the Democrat Party today. You guys aren't interested in lowering property taxes. You're not interested in doing anything. You're interested in raising taxes. The fact of the matter is, when you were in charge of this place, your fake populism didn't sell. You raised taxes on the working class. You raised taxes, higher sales taxes, higher gas taxes. You even went out and you t- represented Rukavina, and you raised taxes on those guys who, after they put in 10 hours in the mines, just want to go have a beer. You voted to raise their taxes. You're not going after corporations or big business. Democrats do the same thing they always do. They go after the middle class and sock it to them because that's where the money is. You don't want to lower property taxes. You want to stick it to the middle class like you always have, and that's why we're in charge of this place and you're not. You're right. When you're in the majority, you got to do, a lot of times, things you don't necessarily agree with, but you got to lead. And, but don't sit across the table and preach to me about property taxes, because you look. There's one consistent factor in when property taxes escalated in Minnesota over the last decade, and it's been either Swiggum or Palenti around to escalate them, whether they were speakers, majority leaders, or governors. That's when the property taxes went out of control in this state. A property tax is the worst tax there is, along with sales tax. And you guys have helped escalate them. I haven't. Well, and <laughs> the fact of the matter is, when you were in charge of this place, 68 Democrats, not one single Republican, 68 Democrats stuck it to the middle class. You guys even went after the tax credit for organ donation. Organ donation. So what's your fair share argument there, Representative Rukavina? The people who are donating kidneys in this state aren't paying their fair share to the state of Minnesota? Where's the advocacy for the middle class there? When push came to shove, 68 Democrat green votes went up on the floor to stick it to the middle class. And if you guys get control of the House and Senate with this governor, Katie, bar the door. You are going to drive this state into the ground. It terrifies the businesses, the employers, and the employees of the state of Minnesota of what you guys would do with a blank check and no foot on the brake pedal. We could take this outside, and I don't mean way the heck outside in a brawl. I mean just to get out of the room. But I'm more than willing a little guy to take you on anyhow. But uh, uh, aside from that, no. Again, back to what we did. An income tax, which is the fairest tax. You guys stick it to people that don't have the wherewithal to pay their property taxes. You keep raising them and raising them. Now you're taking the uh, renter's credit away from them. The next it'll be the circuit breaker credit being taken away from them. No. Uh-uh. You stick it to the middle class, and we can see the bills around here this year. Trying to undo unions, trying to take away the middle class. You know, the last time we had a Great Depression in this country, 1% of the richest people controlled 24% of the wealth. And when unions came in, under my hero FDR, it got up to 1% of the uh, richest controlling only 10% of the wealth. Because unions helped everybody in this room, everybody at this table. Representative Downey's father is a union teacher. His best buddy, Willard Eichler, from the Iron Range, from Eveleth, Minnesota, who was their great hockey coach for years, and by the way, used to steal some of our kids to come down and play any diner because you didn't have enough good kids to play hockey. But anyway, all good union people. That's how you got here because your dad was a union. That's how you got here because your parents are Democrats, and they still love you, but they're ashamed of your politics. (laughs) But anyway, and I can go all the way down the uh, aisle here. And, and you're trying to undo that? You're trying to turn us back to 100 years ago where we're going to, 20 years from now, going to have to fight for pensions and health insurance and a eight-hour workday and everything else? No, don't you lecture me, young man, about what the hell's going on around here.